Hey guys, I'm joining you in the new video and with a completely different and new rifle. Uh, this one is actually from uh, a manufacturer that I, uh, you may already know, it's Altaros. Uh, it's a manufacturer that started uh, his business with regulators. And actually my first video was actually basically because of that uh, company, because uh, I reviewed and uh, showed how that regulator is fitted in the Hudson rifle at that time and that's how I got started. Uh, so now we are here with this rifle which is something that I wanted to try and uh, get for about two years now. I believe it's uh, been uh, known about it for about two years but they were not uh, available for purchase for until relatively recently. So I purchased this gun. This is my gun. And you will immediately notice, wait, this is a centerfire, this is not an air gun, but in fact it is a PCP air gun, working in a very different way, a very different way in terms of operation, in terms of uh, how the valve works, and how uh, the plenum of the regulated chamber is situated, and that is why, of course, it appealed to me, I'm kind of a freak when it comes to... Uh, Technolo technologically advanced and uh, um, uh, let's say complicated but uh, but uh, advancement and improvements in what the conventional PC is and what it can be in the future. So of course beside that fact, beside the technological fact, it also appeals to me that this is actually a centrifire looking really really nice rifle. It is actually based on the military uh, M24 sniper. I don't know much about uh, military guns, so you will probably, uh, you can and you probably will let me know more about this in the comments below, and you should. Um, in any case, this is uh, uh, the, the M24, I believe, is based on uh, Remington 700 rifle, which was then adopted by the military. That's about all I know actually. But uh, if you look at it, the stock is basically from that gun. I believe it's actually made for the, the uh, center fire rifle itself. But the special thing about this is how it operates. So it has a conventional, let's say, firearm bolt. It looks like it. And there is no chamber or no um, cylinder for the air, although it is PCP. Uh, uh, PCP powered so you are charging it so let's just go through things there are a lot of things I would just like to point out uh, for those regular viewers that are used and only accept PCP air guns that have really high shot count and uh, this is different this is not for you this is not made for really high shot count but it is made for high precision really long range shooting and that's about it and really really nice feeling really nice trigger everything everything works in this gun if you ask me so let's just start from the bottom how this actually works so the main thing let's start with the cylinder where is the cylinder right you, you need to have the air somewhere it is actually in this barrel although this is only 25 millimeter in outer diameter this contains uh, 1.2 deciliter so 0.12 uh, uh, liters of air, which is not a lot, but it still gives you at current settings. So right now I have the regulator set to 160 bar, which is uh, the default setting from how it comes from the factory. And with this, I get 75 joules. I will write down the F uh, foot pounds energy for those of you who are unfamiliar with joules. So it's 75 joules, which is a lot, probably somewhere in 55 uh, foot pounds of energy in 22 caliber. And with this setting from 200, bill, uh, 200 bar fill, which is the maximum fill for this cylinder, um, I still get about 12 shots. It's uh, officially it's 10 shots, but in my experience, I got 12. In any case, this is the cylinder as well as the barrel. So this is not the first gun that ever had this kind of uh, way of, uh, of uh, using the cylinder and the barrel integrated. 
Uh, there is a gun, I believe, called uh, from SPA, from Chinese, uh, that is uh, M30 model, I think, also has the same design, but that has a much bigger cylinder. And although that, of course, is nice that it brings a lot of shots, it kind of destroys the look. It kind of feels like a extreme bull barrel design of the gun. So it's 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 a little uh, prettier than having a cylinder uh, below or a, a bottle, but it's still not as nice as this one. So I understand why uh, they went uh, with uh, this kind of relatively small diameter cylinder so uh, but uh, where this gun really shines is the way how the actually the valve and the uh, plenum so the uh, regulator chamber operates and where it's situates uh, situated so let's uh, let's go on so first inside of this tube is air and right in the middle there is probably i haven't opened it yet a very thin barrel in 22 caliber there is an option to put a, a suppressor, any kind of uh, muzzle, uh, any, any kind of suppressor basically uh, at the end. It's a uh, half an inch uh, UNF thread, so standard. Uh, I would say that uh, I have shot this gun suppressed and uh, I would advise to have a relatively big volume suppressor because most guns use this part as a... Um, basically a shroud so it's additional volume to the suppressor you're adding and in this case of course this is not used for a shroud and because of that uh, this volume is not available to additionally help with to the suppressor so um, you need kind of big suppressor to really quiet it down i have let's say a standard size and uh, it uh, it's much quieter of course than without it but it's still not that quiet so this is uh, one thing uh, i would say about that so if we go back from here uh, we get to the regulator regulator adjustment and also the gauges there are actually two gauges you can see very clearly this one and this one is for the regulated uh, air and there is a really uh, hardly a seen uh, gauge back here in the inside so to your right from the fill nipple uh, which is for the unregulated air so you're actually observing the inner one when you're filling up the gun and the gun fills up uh, fills up just like any gun uh, with the standard uh, nipple uh, and you also get a sort of a filling station without the gauge there is no gauge here because this gun is also uh, intended if you have a chance to be shot uh, uh, tethered uh, if shot with a tethered, it is recommended that you have an external regulator. Although if you don't have it and you just make, have to make sure that the bottle is 250 bar or less in order not to exceed the pressure of this cylinder. And you can still use it without additional uh, external regulator because this gun does have an internal regulator which is actually in this part as well. And it is also externally adjustable, although there are very strict in, uh, instructions how to adjust this regulator. And this uh, includes uh, having the pressure both of the main cylinder, so the barrel cylinder, let's say, as well as the plenum below. So both those gauges should show less pressure than the current uh, setting of the regulator. So let's say now I have regulator set to 160 bars. If I were to increase or decrease the pressure, I need to first uh, dry fire it until that pressure gets below that pressure. So below 160 bars. And then I can adjust it and fill it back up and see where I'm at. I haven't actually done that yet, as well as uh, I haven't disassembled this gun. For a very simple purpose, I want to show you how it's from the factory, how it's when you, it comes out of the box, how it shoots, how it's set up, how it feels, everything. And once I'm done with that and I make a video about that, then I will start to play with gun, this gun for sure. So we are here at the regulator. Now you might say, okay, it's, here is the regulator, but where is the plenum, right, for the regulated air? Well, it's actually in the boat. So uh, from this regulator, it actually the, a very small hose, which is a flexible hose, sort of like this, goes and connects from the bottom to the actual bolt. And in the bolt, there is a volume of compressed air. So that's your plenum. So right now at 160 bars. And you are moving this whole thing. And that's uh, why you need the flexible hose. 
in order to cock it and in order to load it. This is a single shot uh, PCP air gun and it's really easy to load. <laughs> I kind of did a stupid thing there <laughs> because uh, watching the videos from Altaros, I thought that you have to actually insert the slug in the barrel, but that's not necessary. You actually only have to put it on the groove of the bolt here and then just close it and it pushes it in and closes it. So let's get back to the bolt. The bolt design is where is all the magic happening. And I really like that. And that is also what uh, Altaros holds the patent for. And I look at, uh, take a look at that pato, uh, patent and it's actually quite genius. Basically, basically it's like a gun, uh, li like a gun when you have uh, cartridges filled with air, but in this case, the cartridge is actually the bolt. So you don't need to change cartridges. You just, uh, the bolt is refilled through the regulator from the main chamber. And uh, that's basically how it operates. Inside there is a valve and it's the, the, the key point, and this is, um, I'm emphasizing this always, if you want high efficiency, high power, and also high efficiency in terms of not only air consumption, but also in terms of how high the pressure needs to be in, in order to achieve certain uh, power, you need to have as, as little of transfer port as possible. So you need to have it, it needs to have high uh, flow transmission, uh, so um, uh, but not long length, so not high volume. And in this case, the valve is right behind the slug. So basically, when you push that slug in, the valve is right here on the end. So and, and when you fire, there is no volume between the valve and the actual projectile. And this gives you that extreme high efficiency. And that is why you can get... 10 plus shots, so in my case 12 shots, with this gun at this setting at 75 joules with this ridiculously small cylinder. And this is something, this is one of the reasons why I really, really wanted this gun. So it's basically in a way, in, in this terms, similar to Huben, which also has the valve right behind. And also Huben, the reason why it's so effective, uh, as, um, and effective and efficient, it's exactly because of that fact. And uh, over here, unlike Huben, you are shooting through the barrel. That's that those this combination. So the fact that it looks like a firearm, uh, the fact that uh, it has this special valve which is right behind the slug, and the fact that it shoots from the barrel and not from the magazine. It does not have magazine, of course, since it's single loading. Uh, is one of the reasons that I expected, and I as I have tested, this gun delivers extreme accuracy, and. Uh, there are also other reasons why this is uh, as it is, uh, but this is kind of three key uh, features for me. So the other reasons was also be the fact that this barrel is completely free floating. So if you look at the stock, the barrel is completely, uh, it's not touching. There's actually space on both sides in between. Maybe you can see this probably not too well because of the scope. So it's completely free floating and on the actual or receiver or action or whatever you call it. So this is mounted to the stock and from here forward there is no touching so everything is completely floating. And of course over here on the same part is also the scope. And um, having be this gun being so accurate and uh, relatively high, high power for the caliber, uh, this gun also features, but I'm not sure if that is uh, by default or you have to order separately, but it features uh, a adjustable rail and you can see three screws two of them uh, back here and one here so basically here is a fixed uh, pivoting point and over here you can actually unscrew those two screws and loosen this one up as well and then you can tilt it more to get that really really long range um, or, uh, shots and if you have ever heard of this gun and ever seen a video about this gun you will see that with this gun Altaros is uh, aiming for ridiculously long ranges um, they may or may not be effective I mean he, he has gone I believe close to one mile range or something like that and um, although that's fine it's still in my opinion too much dependent on the everything else because the air guns are relatively low velocity guns but still it's amazing that it can be even be done and uh, with this i can move on 
let's go through some other features i will also show you later on how to load so um, the trigger because the bolt is moving and the actual uh, hammer and everything that has to do with the valve is actually in the um, in the bolt uh, it's actually designed like this that if the bolt is not completely forward you cannot pull the trigger the trigger is by the way two stage and it's uh, somewhat adjustable actually it's quite a bit adjustable i haven't done it yet but i will in the future and right now how it comes it uh, has a really really light first stage and a uh, um, slightly heavy not really heavy but slightly heavier second stage but very short that's very important that's actually excellent for me it does have some weird feeling when you pull it very slowly the second stage but it's really nice it's still really nice i still think that from the factory without adjustment this is probably one of the better triggers which is of course again very important when it comes to accuracy so i was explaining that if the bolt is not fully forward then the trigger actually doesn't even engage the mechanism inside where the hammer lies so there is no way that you can pull the trigger here and you can even feel it that uh, other than first stage there is no more uh, possibility to uh, pull it further backwards when you try so in any condition even in fully cocked so fully back i'm not uh, i haven't cocked it yet for you now uh, even in full back position you cannot trigger and hence you also cannot decock it that's kind of unfortunate i wish I, we, I could do that but it's not possible so the only way to uh, put it uh, off cock so have it decocked after it's cocked it's either to dry fire or fire with the slug and the same thing goes of course with the slug you theoretically can get the slug slug out if you like from the barrel once you close the bolt you just open the bolt and use the um, cleaning rod and push it back out that is possible but still if you're in that situation i mean you better off just fire in the, in the ground one shot and uh, to make sure that it's not cocked um, so uh, one of the things that bothers me uh, that it has no safety so the only safety is having it either decocked or having it in the other any other position than closed by the way um, this uh, tray in the front side does contain a spring so meaning that you cannot leave it like this and uh, without a bolt closed down it will go right back you see so uh, there is no way that you would leave it like that and you can actually pull the trigger in that case of course but the mechanism doesn't allow this and push it right back and again the trigger is locked so it's safe so the only way to uh, to pull the trigger is actually when uh, the bolt is fully forward and to keep it fully forward you must also have it closed uh, uh, so uh, let's uh, get uh, how this uh, uh, operation uh, is performed the cocking and the loading um, I haven't mentioned yet, but you might already know, uh, Altaros is also making a very special kind of slugs. I have tested them already and uh, reviewed them in the uh, Huben video, because uh, he is also making the slugs for Huben, which are actually uh, excellent. So it's also a very special design how it's making those slugs, and they are not uh, cast nor swage, they are actually tur uh, turned, so basically he's using a CNC lathe to make them which makes them really really accurate and also the shapes are um, are really there, there is no limit to what kind of shape it can be uh, done with this kind of design so right now i'm using these slugs this perform the best these are 40 grain in 22 caliber uh, they are a boat tail and have extremely uh, high bc this one is claimed to be 0 0.21 and i have no doubts that that's that's what it actually is so um, with these slugs I get best accuracy, although the velocity is a bit low for my taste, so it's about uh, 245 meters per second. That is, I believe, uh, under 800 or just 800 feet per second, something like that, I will write it down. Um, in any case, with this munition, one MOA is really no issue at uh, any range, basically, is, of course, the wind and things like that can affect it. But in terms of uh, what the gun can perform, that's no issue whatsoever. You can use any pellet. I have tested uh, basically Monster Redesign and Beast. Um, I should point out 
the barrel is Lothar Walter, is standard air gun choke barrel. Not really, in my opinion, the best choice of a barrel. I mean, don't get me wrong, the, I'm getting excellent accuracy with this, those slugs, as well as good accuracy with pellets. But these barrels are kind of, in my experience, known to have uh, uh, issues with higher velocity with pellets. That's the only reason why I would maybe test something else. else. And I also will do that, uh, as I mentioned before, once I get to the point when I'm starting to experiment with the gun. Uh, but in any case, you know it's quality barrel inside. Um, so the back side is, uh, in this case, I have this uh, uh, adjustable cheek rest. This is not uh, by default on the gun. I believe you have to order it uh, separately or uh, at least uh, re request it separately. Uh, in any case, I have it adjusted now perfectly for this scope. And this is a really nice soft uh, cheek uh, cheek piece of um, material so it actually it's really really nice to shoot and also adjustable is the length of pull so the back side you can adjust it further back and or further forward before we get to the cocking uh, let's uh, get to the accessories or to the gun uh, by default you are getting this uh, filling station which can be also used for tethered shooting you are getting spare o-rings and a spare o-ring for the actual filling station you are getting some spacers so you can adjust different uh, lengths of pull so i'm not sure if the, those are really necessary to be snapped on and tightened but i think that they make the whole uh, stock, uh, the butt stock that pushes against your shoulder uh, more rigid, so they are a good idea. And with these three, so there are two uh, of this kind of size, this kind of length, and one shorter. Uh, you With the combination of those three, you can basically get any kind of distance. So you can go either without to have really short length of pull, or with all of them to have a really long one. Um, as I mentioned, this uh, cheek piece is not uh, by default a uh, feature of this stock, so you have to order this separately. And uh, without it, of course, it's kind of uh, harder to align your eye with the scope. Uh, I should point out one very important thing about uh, this gun, that at least currently, I'm not sure that if uh, there is ever a plan to, for this to change, this gun is only available uh, in European Union and from what Altaros told me till now mostly only Czech uh, customers receive them although it is available as I mentioned in whole Europe so hopefully this review will convince other people and hopefully you guys from the US or from any other uh, country uh, will have ever or <laughs> chance to, to, to own uh, this uh, PCP Okay, so basically I went through everything, I believe. I'm sure I've forgotten something. Uh, maybe just a few specs. If you need detailed specs, there are links uh, in the description below. Uh, Altaros has a really, really nice uh, user manual, which tells you all you need about the gun. Uh, you can actually find this manual online. Again, links below. And you also get the detailed description of how to adjust the regulator uh, um, in uh, a special document which is just for adjusting the regulator you do also get a key this is seven millimeter metric uh, uh, key to adjust the regulator which is done here so basically you use this key and adjust it here and there is also an allen key of three millimeters i'm not sure exactly what this one is for but i'm sure if i'll find out uh, so let's go to the cocking of the gun. So uh, this length is really easy to move because there is no spring uh, loaded other than the one that is preventing of the bolt to stay fully forward. So what you do is pull the gun back until this point and then it is advised that you don't only use this uh, ball at the end of the uh, bolt to pull back because then you are kind of creating a, a torsion force but you actually use a thumb on the other side and what you do is grab it here and pull the thumb on here and you just pull it to the end and that is at far go of, um, as far back as it goes 
In terms of look, it would look nicer if it went further. But in any case, that is as far back as it goes. And when you close it, if you have the slug inside, I don't have it now because I will dry fire it. Um, you act, it's actually good that you again use the, your, the thumb and push it forward here and then just close it. It is really easy to do, so you don't need really your thumb. The closing is easier. So right now it is cocked and ready and I make really sure that it's empty because I'm going to dry fire it now and I don't want to make a hole in one of the guitars there. So right now I can just pull the trigger and it will be really loud. Really short and really nice sound by the way. And uh, I will also show you and in this case I will load a slug for you but I will not fire afterwards so I will not even cock it. I have to cock it. Okay so slug face forward like this hopefully you can see this and then you only close the bolt and it goes inside that's it again I will put it out now and dry fire that's it that's all to it so you can be quite fast and I do wish that it was a repeater but of course uh, based on the technology of the bolt how this uh, uh, everything works it's kind of impossible to have it's all really hard at least if you want to use any kind of ammunition like pellet slugs and things like that so uh, I believe that wraps up this video there will be more videos when I'm shooting outside with this and long range probably I will get to one, over 100 meters that's kind of makes sense for this gun. As I mentioned, I've tried it. I got MOA accuracy with this, those slugs and also uh, pellets were good. The Monsters redesigned were quite good. Slightly unstable at longer distances, but that is due to the barrel, not due to the gun. And the high velocity, of course. Um, I will afterwards also tune it, probably up. Uh, I would like to get those 40 grains to go at around 900 feet per second. I'm not sure if I will reach that, but that is uh, one of my desires and one of my goals. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you like this video. Hopefully uh, you like this uh, gun. To me, it's really, really nice. By the way, the stock is plastic. It's uh, not wood, but it's uh, really nicely finished. So it doesn't feel bad at all. One negative I was thing I would mention about it is that it's really, really wide here. So this is really wide, uh, so uh, although the grip is really nice, it's kind of uh, weird to hold because it, it's that wide. Um, that's about the only complaint I have about the stock. Uh, smaller thing, uh, maybe I would like to see, but that is kind of a de desire that it's probably not, not ever going to be met. To see the this uh, barrel, the cylinder, to be uh, slightly thicker here and going slightly narrower towards the end like in fire firearms maybe we would even get a couple of um, cubic centimeters of air but that's unlikely that that would happen because that would require very custom high pressure aluminium cylinder in order to to to, to do that um, so i think that's it thanks for watching guys uh, see you in the next one
the consistency of the velocity is just astonishing. Maybe we are on the regulator limit, we'll see. If the next one is even lower than that. No, no, okay. That's still fine. It's now over 10 shots, I believe, or just 10. Now we are under, definitely. I mean, in which gun can you definitely say that you are under when you are just one meter per second from the from the center point, so from this uh, deviation from the, the average velocity. Really, really, really nice. And the accuracy is just amazing.